this time on Between the Wheels. So this is a 1971 Nova, decided to make a race car out of it. We had to work backwards and we totally took the whole car apart, right down to absolutely nothing. It looked, I'm sure cars and junkyards look better than this thing did. Ross had the car and I had the powertrain. Henry had a 69 Camaro that he raced in stock eliminator. And we amalgamated the cars together. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, don't get caught by the cops. Yeah. <laughs> No replacement for displacement. Let's do this. <laughs> they're, they're still a kid in me. <laughs> yeah, I really like it. I love this car. Now you must get some looks driving this thing. Yeah, well, this car isn't around anymore. Every given time, your truck always had three, four hundred pounds of tools in it. So what drives you with this car? It's fun having it. Look at this. So what we're looking at here is a 1971 Chevy Nova, and I'm standing here with Ross and Henry. I've been the owners of this car for, for the last, what, 30 years, if not longer? <laughs> 30 years plus. 30 years plus. So first of all, tell me about this car. What am I looking at here? So this is a 1971 Nova. I bought it, or actually I traded for it. I had a, an Apollo, which is a Buick version of a Nova. Right. But I wanted a Nova, so I straight traded for it. We drove it around Carling for quite a while decided to make a race car out of it. When we decided to make it a legal stock eliminator, the flares had to go and, you know, we had to do a lot of different body mods, put it back to factory original, essentially. We had to work backwards and we totally took the whole car apart, right down to absolutely nothing. It looked, I'm sure cars and junkyards look better than this thing did. We had a friend of ours, Rob, come and put the quarter panels on. Uh, he did all the body and, of course, we helped him. And Rob painted the car as it is today, and that is 30, yeah, 1990. Now you guys race this a lot, so obviously tell, tell us this history about what those races were like. Well, we basically started with Lustful just to break the car in and see what it would do. Mm -hmm. And then we went down to uh, NHRA Division I points meets. It was uh, Epping, New Hampshire, uh, English Town. What were those times like back in back there? Race? Good traveling times. Uh, we had different vehicles. Some were adequate and some were, <laughs> you know, less than adequate. <laughs> adequate, but uh, they were good trips. You know, camaraderie and and meeting people and talking to the racers and things like that. And yeah, just good, comfortable, friendly times. That was really the golden era of racing. I think a lot of people were cars were just in top forms. There's so much competition. Unfortunately, this is something that's kind of slowly dying away. So it's, it's nice to see this car in this shape that you're kind of keeping that way. It just brings people right back. <laughs> yes, 100%. So how did you guys end up doing this together? Because usually 
want to do these episodes with just one person. It's really rare that you have people that actually aren't related. So you guys are almost like family, but you aren't family technically. Yeah. But based on your amazing story, like how, how did this come about? We just started hanging out together and Henry had a 69 Camaro that he raced in stock eliminator. hanging around with my older brother and his friends who went to a lot of the local drag strips. They got interested in that. And then I started actually driving my own cars in the uh, 70s. Camaro was a drag car. Mm -hmm. It was already built and was built for a friend of mine 20 years before that. So it was already done with the cage and everything else. It just needed, the engine needed to be freshened, the transmission needed to be updated. Right. To run a little bit quicker, but it was a drag car at the time. The drivetrain from that car actually ended up in, in this car. Correct, Ross had the car mm -hmm. and I had the powertrain and a friend of mine had a 71 or 72 SS. So we got the 12 bolt uh, differential out of that and the hood of course and some other SS stuff and we amalgamated the cars together. These front fenders are actually from an Acadian. So we changed those just because being a Canadian car, they tend to rust out and these fenders were better than the ones that were on it. Mm -hmm. The back tail panel we changed, so a 71 has wider tail lights, yeah. and a 69 has narrow ones, so we had to fill in the small part in the back okay. to make the 69 tail lights fit. And the Acadian is obviously the Canadian version of this vehicle. Correct. Um, they were just uh, they were Pontiac, I think, it was yes. instead of uh, instead of Chevy, and they look slightly different, but it's the exact same body, pretty much. Every everything was exactly the same. Now, in terms of the engine, what originally came in this in this engine? Nice. When we built the car, like I said, we took the uh, the 350 four barrel out of my '69 Camaro with a Power Glide two speed. Oh yeah, two speed. Okay. Correct. So that was what we ran in the class, and uh, it was a 30 over with flat top pistons. Uh, it's got a cast iron intake, cast iron head. This is all legal NHRA stock eliminator. Mm -hmm. uh, the cam came out of my car that I've had for quite a few years. And it's a stock, uh, original stock eliminator cam. So we raced that in different forms, but always the same block, same pistons. So it still was legal. And then we ran that up until 97, 98. Yes. give or take and then we took that engine out and this is another 350 30 over engine mm -hmm. with the stock eliminator cam still which is 30 40 years old with the original cast iron heads and cast iron intake so what's the what are the specs now in terms of torque and horsepower did you guys get it on a dyno or check it's never been dyno so we have no no uh what would you ballpark I, if you were happy in the class, and I'm gonna, I'm, I shouldn't say anything. <laughs> the, if you run a certain, like say this ran low 12, so if you ran a 12 second and you take the weight of the car, which is 3390 with the driver in it, and it tells you how much horsepower it takes to get down the quarter mile. A ballpark figure is around 400 horse, 400 horse. something okay. like that, but don't quote me, the okay. best I ran was a 1215 roughly. So this has stood the test time. This, this is 30 years we're talking at at least 30 years, 30 plus years, and it still looks in great shape. What I love about this car versus a lot of cars I do, it, it's not a pristine car. Like this has some wear on it, but you've like, this thing's been through a lot of racing. You've had, it has a lot of history. And the thing I love is when I look at the pictures of it back in, when you did it, it looks pretty much exactly the same. Minus, it, it doesn't have some of the stickers. Now you could still see where they were. You could actually see some of the, if you really look close. Right. But it, it's such a throwback to see this, and it's almost like time traveling, kind of seeing this, this car the way it was versus the way it is now, which is very similar. Yes. Yeah. What was your motivation to, to making it like this and keeping it like this and not changing anything over time? Because a lot of people keep changing uh, vehicles, making them better or making them to show cars. Why didn't you go that route? Because we still want to race the car and it's like you said, it, it's the patina of the car and it's the history of the car. And if you do the bodywork and change it, that history is gone. Yeah. 
and well many, said. many years of history from Carling Avenue right up to NHRA and right. and just didn't want to change it. I think that's really cool. I, I love that, but it looks awesome. And I think the last thing we got to do is actually take it for a drive because <laughs> I'm just dying to go on this thing. For a lot of people that have been watching the show and have watched our other show, I've been looking for one of these cars for almost a year now. Yeah. So yes. doing this episode is like, like I said, it's absolute dream come true. And I love what you've done with the car. I love the history and it's a really cool team you guys have. And uh, we got to take it for a ride and, and see what it's like. <laughs> So this is not the two-speed power glide then, obviously. No, this is not. Yeah. When when we did the two-speed power glide, um, when I started to drive it back in the street again, I always found out that after I got to gear number two, I needed one more gear. So we put a three-speed turbo 350 in it. Okay. And nowadays I'm finding I need another gear because get out in the highway and I'm running probably 3,200 RPM at 60 miles an hour. Right. And so uh, I built a, well, a friend of mine, Steph Collins, built a, uh, a 200R four speed automatic. Oh, nice. So at some point in time, we'll uh, get that installed. Very cool. So, and this transmission, even though it's automatic, um, it's it still automatic. has to be shift manually for some reason. <laughs> I just kind of wanted to put it into drive and let it do its thing and it uh, doesn't want to do that. So I just do it this way. It's a pretty raw drive, I like it. <laughs> it is, it's no stereo because I think it's kind of the stereo's the exhaust system in the engine. But damn right, man. I never get tired of listening to it. Oh, it sounds nice. It does a three inch exhaust, uh, three inch flow masters, and it goes back to the back over, over the differential with two and a half inch pipes, which quieted it down quite a bit. Right. Yeah, it's, it's not crazy loud when it idles. When I was back there, it, it's loud in here now. Yeah. <laughs> but just idling, it's not, you know, blowing your ears up or anything. Yeah, no. No, that's uh, 50 miles an hour. So, and we're going about 2,500 RPM. But you, you find that on the highway, because you're using this not for drag racing, you're you're enjoying it more for everyday driving. You, you want to go with that four speed get the better fuel economy, lower the RPMs essentially. Correct. What, yeah. what would it bring you down to, do you know? <clears throat> Technically, it should bring us down to around between 22 and uh, 2,500 RPM, okay. which would be perfect at 65 miles an hour. What is it at now when you hit that speed? At, uh, well, we'll bring it up to 60. All right. And so that's uh, a shaky 60 right there. And that's uh, about 2,900 RPM. So it would probably bring it down like 1,100 RPM. Wow, that's a big change. So it's quite a bit. Yeah. And it should take more of the drone out of it as well. But but I gotta tell you, man, like it's really comfortable. Like I love the big bench seat and it looks like the original bench seat, but it's not. It's not from drag racing and uh, jumping over the bar that was here. Uh, I actually flattened the seat out. I broke all the springs in it <laughs> and uh, bent the frame. No so way. this seat is actually out of a, uh, a Ventura, which is another a Pontiac version of a Nova. Right. We went to recover it. And in the Novas, they were part vinyl, part cloth. Okay. However, when I tracked them down, the people that made the seat covers kept telling me they don't exist and I would say to them well they do exist because it's in my car my car is original yeah and so we argued back and forth until he finally said are you Canadian and I said why yes he goes well that explains it they don't they in the US they never made them 
with cloth. Really? So I had to get a vinyl one. So there are some differences between the Canadian and the American versions of the vehicles then? There are, yeah. Wow. I wouldn't know that, that's interesting. But a majority of everything all fits together and yeah. Wow, that's pretty, pretty simple. Uh, pretty cool, yeah. Yeah. A lot of people do that. They have like a manual automatic. We did an episode on a Chevelle. Someone yes. you know, Bruce, and his his has the same deal. Also has a uh, Turbo 350, I believe, or it was a 400. I'm not. I don't remember exactly, but he had the same deal, and he likes that. Yes. Yeah, but you still have to manually shift it. You can't just put it in drive. You just can't put it in drive. And, and they are a lot to drive. Yeah. Because you, you got to have your wits about them. There's no power steering. There's no power brakes. They're very obnoxious. And yeah, yeah you have to shift them. So you always you're always listening for the RPM. Yeah. And I I'm a two foot driver on this one. <laughs> See what happens here. issue is I guess I do That's do that. <laughs> I like Henry was saying earlier yeah. that uh, yeah, I have no problems doing that. Wow. And uh, yeah. Man, it's a lot of fun. It is. Yeah. That's what they're about. It's about having fun. You know? Yeah, it's about having fun. And uh, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, don't get caught by the cops. Yeah. <laughs> So how does the line lock work? So essentially you um, plumb it into the front brake lines, you push the button and there's a valve in there and it just turns it into a one-way valve where as you pump the brakes, okay. it pushes the fluid forward and it holds the, the brakes in the front. Right. And then, uh, which allows the back wheels to spin freely. And then you can do your burnout for drag racing. Yeah. And once you're done, you just let the button go. It releases the front brakes and you're gone. What a smooth uh, burnout that was just because of that. Like, it, yeah. that's awesome. How do you find the handling of this car? Because it's a smaller car. A lot of the muscle cars are really large. Like, this is a small car. It's, uh, it handles great. Yeah. I could drive down the road and, well, you know, yeah. a few pounds here, but I can steer <laughs> with my belly. <laughs> <laughs> that's the most Canadian thing I've ever heard. It sounds like from Trailer Park Boys or something. <laughs> Trailer Park Boys, <laughs> yeah. yeah. It's, it drives perfect, there's no... Oh look, someone else has beat us to the punch. Oh, I see some burnout marks. Uh, road graffiti or road, road tattoo. Graffiti. Yes, road tattoo. <laughs> One other thing is yet to be done. Yeah. Is you've been looking for a Nova for a long time. Yeah. And uh, the question is, and doing the videos, have you ever actually got to drive one of the cars that you shot a video of? No, I can't say I have. Well, I think you should drive this. Really? Yeah. Will you let me drive it? Yes. Oh wow, okay. I was not prepared for that. That's <laughs> I I'm think not... all the cameras are all set up and I think you should drive it. Okay man, well I'm gonna have to do it. Squeeze it and pull it all the way to the back. And that's, that's first? It. Yep, that's all first. Right. And then to shift and then you just, just push? shift it forward, yep. Oh, okay. Alright, well. Holy shit, I'm driving Noah. <laughs> You're driving an Oma. That's right. I'm so yeah. used to a real manual. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> That's right. Yeah, they're all on wow. sliders to it. Now this is really cool. Oh yeah, no power steering, eh? <laughs> no power steering, huh? Yep, and it 
and hit it one more time. I think oh, I'm third. Oh, oh I'm already there. Third, yeah. I hit third too early. <laughs> yeah. I've never driven like this before. This is so cool. Yeah. Wow, this is awesome, man. It Thank gives you. you. Gives you a perspective of, of how it is to be in the actual driver's seat when you're actually getting filmed. And wow. I think that's uh, a, a good addition to your videos. That uh, way. Absolutely. Not something I ever considered or I thought I'd have the honor of doing. <laughs> yeah. Wow, this is nice, man. And uh, also the fact that you want to know of us, so it kind of, you know, it, it could yeah. be. Um, how do you say that? Uh, well, you've been extremely supportive. We've been talking a lot, and you've been one of the most supportive people I've met for this. So this is a real honor for you to let me do this. So thank you. This is yes, you're very, very welcome. This is awesome. Uh, it's, uh, these are great vehicles, and I think they're 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 part of history, and they deserve to be treated with respect. <laughs> they are, and you know, at some point in time, I'll have to pass it on to somebody else. And... Right. Which way do you want to go? Turn right. Turn right. All right. Yeah. Let's try to hit second properly this time. Yep. Yeah. So you don't have to hold this, no, just, just shove it forward. All right. Oh yeah, I don't have to. Yeah. There we go. There we go. That's better. <laughs> I was just worrying about the gears, but here we are. Hitting <laughs> under. <laughs> That's yeah. a, wow, this is awesome, man. This is beautiful. Something else. It is a lot of fun and uh, just the, the, the joy and pleasure you get from them. A lot of that, for sure. And yeah. then you're the keeper of history as well. Keeper of history, absolutely. Yeah. It's nice in here. Like <laughs> it's, uh, you're driving a piece of history here. Yep. I love it. It's really nice. It's really, yeah. really nice. And you see how it, it drives. It's just yeah. Awesome. Yeah. Yep. Well, I think I picked the right car in terms of looking for Novas. Like, yes. It's the right brand for sure. So right. this is where we are here. There we go. Unless you want to go around the block again. <laughs> totally up to you. You want to go? We can go. Uh, maybe just a little bit. Yeah, go I'm, having, I'm having a little fun here. Let's see what she does, eh? I hit third again. <laughs> oh, that's okay. That's okay. I, I got to get used to it, but she sounds nice. I hope you don't mind me giving it the beans a little no, bit. <laughs> no, 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 not at all. That's what we built it to do. Wow. So. I feel like I'm in a time machine. Yep. Yeah. You can stop again, start it again. Just stop right here. Yeah? Yep. Yeah. Nice. Hey. <laughs> oh shit, yeah. <laughs> and that's not even really pushing it. Yeah. No, it's not. Thanks, man. I really thank you for letting me do this. I really appreciate it. Very, that. very welcome. I'm glad. That's like a dream come true for me right now. That's... And I'm glad to see that you can see both sides of it. Yeah. And then now you know more or less from sitting on this side of it. Yeah. How it is to go when you're doing the videos. Yeah. I think that's uh that's 100% true. Awesome. Yeah. That's what this show is about. It's a learning experience on both ways, and I learned something I totally different. So really yep. cool. Well, thanks for being on the show, guys. I really appreciate it. And uh, one thing we always do is we always give some hats. So I think guys are very deserving of Twin Wheels hats. Well, thank, thank you, you very so much. much for being on the show. Yeah. Thank you so much and sharing this amazing ride and, and showing all the history and everything and, and keeping history alive. Thanks for having us. It's Absolutely. been a pleasure. Absolutely. And there will be Enjoyable. other vehicles we're going to do in the future. Um, you have a really nice wagon that I, we're going to feature later on. Maybe you want to talk about that really quickly? Oh, <laughs> it's a 57 Chevy Bel Air wagon. Right. And we found it in Pembroke in an old pig farm. Pig barn, yep. Uh, back in 03. We took it down to every last nut and bolt. Right. And restored it. The rest <laughs> is history, yeah. Well, we're going to yeah. definitely get into the history. We're going to show that. So that's what's yet to come. We've got a lot of other cool cars and people that you know that are also appearing on the show. So, yeah. so thanks for joining us. Next time on Between the Wheels. Every option that you can have on a 352 in 1980, yeah. you find it on this truck. I saw the truck sitting in the backyard of one of my friend's garage. So this thing was just sitting and no one was doing anything with it and it just didn't really have much of a life. I don't want to spend, drop a lot of money. I do prefer drop the, the money in the, in the tank yeah. and enjoy the ride. That's very nice, and it looks in amazing shape, and you, you've done a good job of bringing it back.